Welcome to ECE 3300 at the University of Utah. Today in lecture number 26 we're going to study plane wave reflections and normal incidence using a Smith chart. Before we start, please go to the website and download a few Smith charts to take notes on. It's going to be difficult to see the small numbers on the Smith chart in the lecture. So to begin, let's talk about plane wave reflection at normal incidence. First of all, what is a plane wave? What is normal incidence? How do you find the reflection coefficients and the impedances? How do you handle lossy material? And let's make sure you know how to handle boundaries terminated by perfect conductors. Finally, how do you find the electric and magnetic fields? So let's begin by analyzing what is a plane wave. If you have a wave that is propagating in a direction, maybe the z direction, sometimes called the k direction, if you're propagating in the z direction, you have an electric field which has a polarization. The polarization is telling us where the vector of the electric field is. The direction of propagation is where the z or the k, va k value is, and that's the direction of propagation. So the polarization, you can imagine if we had an antenna, for instance, that was vertical, a piece of wire like this, it would create an electric field that's polarized in this direction. The magnetic field is going to be perpendicular to both the electric field and the direction of polar propagation. The way you can tell the direction of these three things is to use your right hand. The thumb represents the direction of propagation, the pointer finger represents the electric field, and the middle finger represents the magnetic field. So right here is a picture from your book that shows you the wave propagating in the z direction as shown, the electric field, that is polarized in the x direction and the magnetic field that is polarized in the y direction. Now what is normal incidence? Normal incidence is when the plane wave is propagating and it comes in normal to the, re to the boundary condition that you're interested in. So for instance, let's suppose that we had region number one is air, region number two is skin, and region number three is muscle. So if we wanted to analyze the plane wave transmission and reflection through the skin and muscle, we would use a plane wave at normal incidence. So here is the electric field, let's say, and the magnetic field would be coming out like this. And both of these are, the electric and magnetic field are polarized parallel to the boundary, but the direction of propagation is perpendicular or normal to the boundary. So normal incidence is defined by the direction of propagation of this plane wave. Now the first thing we need to do is calculate several constants. The first constant that we'll be interested in is eta. That is the ratio of the electric to the magnetic field for a wave traveling in one direction. For instance, eta is the ratio of the incident electric to incident magnetic or the reflected electric to the reflected magnetic. It is not equal to the total electric divided by the total magnetic. In fact, this value is equal to the impedance. The other constant that we need is alpha, which is the propagation constant given in Nepper's per meter, the propagation constant beta, which is given in radians per meter, the wavelength, which is given in meters, and the velocity of propagation given in meters per second. The way we get all of these constants is we use table 7.1 in your book. The column that we most often use is for any media. That's regardless of the alpha, uh, of the epsilon and sigma values that you have. The other column that we will commonly use is for lossless media when the conductivity is equal to zero. There are two other columns that are used for approximations, but we won't be using them in general. So this is how you find the attenuation constant alpha given in nepers per meter, the propagation constant beta given in radians per meter, the characteristic impedance eta which is given in ohms, the velocity of propagation, and the wavelength. When you need other values, they're down here in the notes section. I want to make note of one thing. Eta is generally complex unless you have a lossless media and then it is strictly real. 